is your position that you have no idea what sufficient evidence for the resurrection looks like, but you're confident you haven't seen such evidence? Correct. In the same way that w this is asked to me quite often about, you know, what would change your mind about God? And mm -hmm. my answer, my answer is, I don't know what would change my mind, because it would be arrogant of me to presume that I have the understanding of reality to be able to tell the difference cool. between a real God and a fake God, or some being this just powerful enough, or a strong delusion, or an evil demon, or whatever else. Sure. But if there is a God, that God absolutely knows what what would convince me, and has not provided that evidence yet. Okay, but then here's my follow up question. If you don't know what the sufficient evidence looks like, you have no idea what it looks like, how can you be convinced you haven't seen it? Because what, what if you've failed to recognize it? It'd be like if I said, I have no idea what a hygrometer looks like, but I know I haven't seen one. Seems like you've left yourself open to, you've missed it because you don't know what it looks like. I, I would never say, if I don't know what a hygrometer looks like, I would never say, I know that I haven't seen one. Okay. I could, I could not say that I haven't seen something I don't know. What I'm saying is that, and so in all the opportunities for somebody to present sufficient evidence, what they have presented are fall, fallacies and testimony. There's no physical evidence. There's nothing that would rise to the level of being admissible in a courtroom. A courtroom is not ordered towards finding the truth. There are biases in the courtroom to prevent the punishment of the innocent. Uh, Correct. So, you know, we don't do we can't try somebody twice even if we get new evidence like it's it's slated so that we'd rather let uh, an innocent you know a guilty person go free it's not just about finding yes. truth it yes. seems like I, i'm just i'm wary of those kinds of analogies i think we should say well what does the evidence point to but, to this in the past and for me go ahead that's the foundation of my epistemology which is what i pointed out in the opening this is this whole notion about the bias in the courtroom to avoid punishing the innocent is exactly right. the same thing as I have a bias in my epistemology to avoid being conned and duped into believing something that isn't true. I want to believe as many true things as possible and as few false things as possible. So it sounds like you're taking not just an epistemology, but a historio, historiographical approach, like how we do history. That is just totally different from every other historian in the world. I'm not, not a historian. Sense. I'm not a historian, and I don't care what methods historians use. Okay, so then you're not. Would you say confirm, that you're not? You're not qualified to tell us what's reasonable to believe in historical matters. I can explain to you what I do and don't find reasonable, and why I'm not a historian. Okay, what I'm what I'm saying is though, what is. Uh, what is reasonable for people to believe about the past? Whether you're convinced of it or not, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You could say, well, I'm not sure this or that, but there seems to be evidence and historical scholars in agreement on this. And I'm trying just to go with the bedrock here that, that Jesus was, just starting with Jesus was crucified. He died by crucifixion. That's every, it's not just they believe it. Every historian in the world who teaches at a major university Affirms what a, what a, what a strange what, what a strange clarification every historian who who teaches at a major university while you're excluding the two people you've referenced who I disagree with by the way Carrier and Bob Price who are historians who don't think that Jesus existed I disagree with them on that uh, even though I keep people keep trying to saddle me with that um, my thing I, is I have inclu I, you know, I included the qualification Matt because there are many and I'm not saying this about Richard or Bob or anything like that but for example there's lots of people who go like there are young earth creationists who get PhDs in geology. Yes. You know? But they're not, but they're not teaching, except for Kurt Wise at Harvard. They're usually not teaching at major universities. I, I use that clause. Well, now because, we've gone to usually. What? Well, now we've gone to usually because you had to add a clarity. Okay. Well, well, that was one. That was just one. Yeah. Well, and now you got there's one more, outlier. There's, there's, but, but there's more people that. in academia, Matt, who believe the earth but, is less than 6,000 years old and think Jesus was never crucified. So it's a, but, it's a fringe view, they, it's rejected. And sure. I know you don't hold that view, but, but that's an it's argument really, to ad populum because the, the fact that people are convinced of something is not a, a measure of whether or not it's reasonable. Reasonableness, so first of all, the truth, neither truth nor reasonableness is determined by the number of people who believe it or how convinced they are.